like and or share today's video. Today's video, the narcissist already had someone before they discarded you. Let's go over the topics of discussion. First topic, the shock and awe of the devaluation and discard supplies the narcissist. Okay, topic number two is triangulation is the one down method of the crazy man. Okay, topic number three, your curiosity or obsession of the new supply, of the narcissist's new supply, is a trap. Is the tools, references, and resources of which you can find in the description box below. The narcissist already had someone before they discarded you. Topics of discussion. First point, the shock and awe of discard and devaluation are what adds to the satisfaction of the narcissist and or those with a custody personality who might have pulled the rug out from under others for narcissistic supply. The shock and awe effect also provides him or her fuel and a strong sense of control as their false self-image continues to survive and thrive. There are some of us who have experienced the shock and awe of discard and devaluation from a narcissist or a cluster of personality. Okay, because most of us are not prepared for this when it happens. So that effect of the rug being pulled out from under us absolutely can add on to that shock and awe effect. And then sometimes there's anger as well as hurt. Okay, this is understandable. The narcissist and cluster personality, they don't break up or they don't end relationships with others in a respectable or a responsible manner. Okay, and, and again, a lot of us have absolutely experienced this. However, what this does for the narcissist is that this satisfies his or her um, control. See, they want to be in control. When the narcissist finds out or they figure they cannot control a person, the discard and devaluation can occur once the narcissist figures or finds out that he or she cannot control someone else. So this is often why in a romantic situation, they like to recycle. They like to move on from one person to the next. The narcissist fears losing control as well as supply. Next point. Many have heard of narcissists and those with a cluster of personality seemingly having a drive to one of others due to a sense of superiority. However, there are some narcissists who might engage in a diabolical tactic of the one down method. Okay, so this particular method, a lot of you probably have not heard of, especially when we're talking about the narcissist and or cluster of personality. And that is the one down method. What happens during the one down method? The narcissist and or cluster of personality, they will select the new supply that is nothing like the current supply. In other words, they, they, it may seem like they have downgraded instead of upgraded with the new supply. The narcissist and cluster of personality, they do this to, in order to mess with the mind and the heart of the current Right supply. now, if you are involved with either a cluster B personality or a person who has a narcissistic personality, you probably have experienced this already. Another thing that the narcissist and cluster B personality like to do is they like to do the on and off thing when it comes to the romance. The narcissist and cluster B personality, they like to feel superior to others, you know, in addition to feeling in control of the entire relationship totally dominating the relationship, right? So they may have that drive to one up people and most of the time they do. Every now and then though, they like to engage in that diabolical tactic of the one down method. So they will select the new supply who is nothing so, like you. For instance, the new supply may not be someone who's very popular. You may be popular. You may be the pillar of your community, whereas the new supply is not. The new supply may not have as much money as you do. They may not have as much clout. They may not even be as attractive. The narcissist is doing this on purpose. On one hand, it seems like they downgrade it. However, on the other, they've obtained new supply, so they're still getting what they want. And all the while, you're very curious, if not obsessed, with the new supply of the narcissist or the fact that the narcissist has new supply. Okay, next point. 
This particular tactic for narcissistic supply is subtle in the beginning due to the distraction of the narcissist triangulating others, which can be a crazy making situation for those on the receiving end of this dynamic. By playing with the mind and or heart of the targeted prey, the narcissist is setting a trap for current supply as well as for new supply, which ensures triangulation. Okay, so the narcissist is triangulating the new supply and the current supply. Some of you have experienced this, right? So this is, again, to attempt to play with the mind and or heart of the uh, current supply, not so much the new supply. The new supply right now is being love bombed, whereas the current supply is being devaluated or, and or discarded. So the narcissist is playing... Uh, right now, they're playing that sick, twisted game, whereas it seems like, on one hand, they have downgraded with the new supply, but they really haven't because they're getting supply, okay? So they're, st they're still getting that narcissist supply. So the narcissist is triangulating the new supply with the current supply. And again, this is a crazy-making situation, and this is all a diabolical tactic for narcissistic supply. Unfortunately, most of the time it works. Let's move forward. The narcissist doesn't have any issues with moving from one person to the next due to having an addiction and obsession to uphold their false self image at all costs. The triangulation can be a crazy making diabolical tactic that the narcissist places into play in order to influence the targeted prey to obsess over the narcissist and their new supply. The narcissist more than likely had the new supply before the romance has appeared to have ended with the current supply. Romances are recycled by narcissists and or those with a cluster view personality due to fear of ever losing supply and control. Unfortunately, many take the bait and become reactionary after the narcissist has been successful in the triangulation aspect of the crazy making process. So most people do become reactionary because see the narcissist, they're playing with the minds and hearts of other people. And this is not cool. You know, this is not cool at all. But the narcissist and cluster personality, they do this for sport. They do it for the fuel. They do it for control. And, of course, they do it for narcissistic supply. The new supply and the current supply are now being triangulated. So when you put all that together, the narcissist is influencing, especially the current supply, to become reactionary over the fact that they have new supply. Okay, so I think all of you can start to see this ugly picture coming to focus. I think a lot of you can begin to see how this picture is so ugly. You know, the situation is ugly. The circumstances are ugly. You know, for those who are on the receiving end of this particular diabolical tactic. So the narcissist and cluster personality, see, they don't care about moving from one person to the next. When it comes to romances, the narcissist and cluster personalities, they cycle or recycle these romances because they don't want to lose control. They don't like the thought of ever losing anyone because they want the narcissistic supply. It's not that they love and care for the uh, suppliers. It's just that they don't want to, they don't like the sense of having to have failed. They don't like the sense of failing. They don't like to think that they have, uh, anyone has slipped through their slimy little hands, right? <laughs> they don't like to think that they have uh, lost anyone, especially before they can get the supply. However, when it comes to the narcissist and cluster personalities, they're very good, unfortunately, with influencing others to become reactionary because they play with the minds and hearts of others so much. So the narcissist, more than likely, they had the new supply long before they discarded or they have devaluated you. So you see the new supply now, it's just a safe bet to think that that person has been in the picture for quite some time. It's just that now it's being waved in your face and the narcissist is doing this on purpose. More than likely they're doing this on purpose because 
you either have said or you have done something that they did not approve of, yet they're not telling you what that is, right? Because now they're giving you the silent treatment. A lot of us have gone through this. Uh, when it comes to uh, when the rug is being pulled out from up under you, yes, most people will become reactionary because they're going to be thinking and feeling certain uh, things, which is absolutely natural. Nobody likes to be rejected in this way. The narcissist loves it, though, because they get the supply. Plus, they get that strong sense of control. And all the while, their false self-image is thriving and surviving. Because if you're becoming reactionary, then you look like the person who has done him or her wrong. Then you look like the person who may be crazy in love. And I mean literally crazy, right? <laughs> See, the narcissist, they're, they're setting that up because that's what they want. They want other people around you to think that you're the one who's, who's causing the breakup. You're the one who messed up in the relationship when actually the reality is the opposite, but it doesn't look that way. So when the new supply is around and you're a reactionary and possibly obsessed with the narcissist having new supply, you see how this begins to look like the narcissist has the false self image of being the cool, calm, collected, and the person who is uh, being the victim here, the person who is the victim, the person who has had their heart broken by you and they just found someone else. You see how that starts to look like that? Okay, so the narcissist, they set this up. And unfortunately, usually it works. The flying monkeys and the enablers, you better believe they will chime in and make sure that you do look like the one who's crazy in love and can't get over the fact that you messed up with the narcissist and a crispy personality and now you're eating crow. So not only will the narcissist have the new supply, right? They will also have the cooperation of the enablers and or flying monkeys to back him or her, okay? To make it look like you're the bad girl or you're the bad guy in the situation when the opposite is true. The opposite is, the, is what the reality is. However, it's not going to appear that way. The key word is appeared. The romance has not ended, folks. Not in the mind of the narcissist, not in the mind of the custody personality, because they don't want to lose supply. So they recycle romances. So even though it looks like they have moved on to the next, no, they, what they have done is put your romance on the back burner. I know this may sound twisted. However, the narcissist, what they like to do is they keep the romances going. They may place some of them on the back burner, but they want to be able to come back to those relationships at any given time. The narcissist and cluster personality, they don't like to break the chain of the supply. They want to keep it flowing. They want to keep it going. They want to keep it plentiful for them, of course. When it comes to the narcissist using silent treatments and seemingly have gone on to the next person, and they have discarded and devalued you, don't be fooled by that. The narcissist and cluster personality, they like to keep romances in, on the back burner. Don't be fooled by that. The narcissist and cluster personality, they like to keep as many romances going as possible because it keeps their supply plentiful. So if they seemingly have broken up with you, they really haven't, not really. On the surface, it looks like they have, but they haven't. They want to be able to come back to you at any given time to get more supply out of you. This is what a lot of us miss, especially when the discard and devaluation is on and heavy. Okay, it's going on. We're right in the middle Some of Some of it. us become reactionary and we're not critically thinking about what's really happening. And I understand that because the heart and the mind is being toyed with. By the narcissist and they're doing it more than likely intentionally because they get supply from that let's move forward one might wonder why the narcissist and or cluster personality has suddenly disappeared from the radar why he or she is not hoovering what happened one may become more obsessed with the narcissist while attempting to figure out how to restore a dysfunctional toxic and volatile relationship with him or her. Now there are a few key words here. One key word is dysfunctional. Another is toxic. 
The third key word is volatile. Okay, now the person, they want to restore such a relationship. So when a person is reactionary due to the narcissist having new supply, and what makes it even crazier is that the new supply seems to be a downgrade. So they have done the one down method in order to drive you completely up the wall and breaking your heart at the same time. So while you may be, or another person, right, whoever this is referring to, they may be reactionary. All the while, this person more than likely is not critically thinking about, first of all, the relationship with the narcissist is dysfunctional. Secondly, why would you want to restore, pardon me, why would you want to restore such a toxic and volatile relationship? Okay, and all the while, again, it's dysfunctional. When a person is in their feelings, when they're in their egos, they're not thinking about this. Okay, now I'm not scolding. I'm just pointing something out, how easily it is for us to overlook what's right in front of us, especially when the discard and devaluation is happening. Okay, so why, is, why isn't he or she hoovering? Okay. We're thinking about, well, what's, ha what's happened? Why haven't they suddenly disappeared? The narcissist is hoping to throw you in such confusion. They're hoping you start uh, focusing in on things that really don't matter. And that is, why aren't they hoovering? Does it matter? Especially when the, the relationship is dysfunctional. Who cares what happened as far as like the narcissist goes? The thing that you want to look at about what happened is why did you end up in the dysfunctional relationship in the first place? But see, the narcissist knows more than likely you're not going to go there. When you ask that question or when I ask that question or anyone who may have been romantically involved with the narcissist or crispy personality, when we ask that question, what happened? We're not asking about how we ended up in the dysfunctional relationship in the first place. We want to restore it right? So what happened? Why did the dysfunctional relationship fall apart? Well, the key word is dysfunctional. It wasn't functioning naturally in the first place. So when we ask that question, what happened? We want to know how can we restore a dysfunctional, toxic, and volatile relationship? I just wanted to really break this down because I've actually made this mistake myself, like many of us have. When the relationship seemingly is over, right? It appears to be over. But what the narcissist has done, what the cluster B personality has done, is place the romance on the back burner. They want to come back to it. Narcissists and cluster B personalities, they don't end relationships in a responsible manner. They don't do it in a respectable manner. They just go from one person to the next. So a person may become obsessed, okay? Or their obsession may increase with the narcissist since now they have new supply. So the narcissist loves to influence people to go absolutely bonkers, figuratively speaking, okay? When it comes to them uh, just putting it in the face of everyone that they have new supply, especially if the new supply seems to be a downgrade, all right? And the thing that a lot of us miss is that even though it appears to be a downgrade, the narcissist is still being supplied, and that is what's most important to the narcissist and of course the personality. So the privilege, so the perk for him or her is that you're also displaying signs of not only being obsessed, but you are trying to figure out how to restore a dysfunctional relationship with him or her. That's the perk for the narcissist. That's just the icing on the cake or the cherry on top, figuratively speaking, for him or her. Which is exactly why, or one of the main reasons why, the narcissist and cluster personality is not hoovering. Why should they? Why, why, I mean, why would they have to? They really don't have to. They're getting the supply. See, the narcissist and cluster personality, they're getting the supply. 
because you are displaying see you're displaying your confusion about what happened right you're displaying it they don't have to hoover you they don't have to suck you back in they've got you and they know it next slide the opportunity to be free of the crazy making shenanigan pulling diabolical tactic engaging narcissist shows itself when the narcissist has obtained new supply however often this opportunity goes undetected by some who are emotionally invested in the narcissist and or cluster b personality and, and once again the reason why it goes undetected the opportunity goes undetected because the person more than likely they're in their feelings they're in their ego they're reactionary they're not critically thinking about what's actually happening during the devaluation and the discard stage the narcissist and cluster personality they really haven't ended the relationship not really on one hand yes they have ended the relationship i'll get to that in a second on the other it appears as if on the other they're playing a sick twisted game by keeping you or or whoever this is referring to right keeping that person hanging on okay and again this is a sick twisted game for the narcissist so they can obtain the supply the opportunity to be free of the crazy making right is right before that individual who has been discarded is right before the individual who has been devaluated. How is that? Well, let's take a look. On one hand, the person is in their feelings. They're in their egos. They're reactionary. They're not critically thinking about what's going on. This is understandable. The narcissist is influencing others by playing with their minds and their hearts intentionally, right? Okay, so what's the other side of that? The opportunity to be free of the crazy making shows up because the narcissist did not break up or they did not end the relationship in a respectable in a responsible manner that right there constitutes as the narcissist technically ending the relationship he or she is not being responsible he or she is not being respectable is that not a reason to no longer have a romantic relationship with a person? In my book, it is. In my book, that constitutes that the person has actually broken up the relationship. They have abandoned the relationship. They have broken the agreement, the mutual agreement to have the relationship, whether it's volatile, toxic, or not. They have broken that mutual agreement simply by moving on getting new supply without even having the conversation as to why for them the relationship is over there's many reasons that people are no longer interested in continuing a relationship since the person has mutually agreed to have the relationship again it doesn't matter if it is dysfunctional or not there's a mutual agreement to have the relationship so when a person becomes unhappy with that or dissatisfied or, you know, they're ready to move on, it is his or her responsibility to communicate that. Some people don't do this. I get it. I'm not naive. I get it. However, what I'm saying is the principle of it. Everybody doesn't follow the principle. Since we're talking about the narcissist here, the narcissist and the cosmic personality, they don't follow or they don't respect that principle. That is, there's a mutual agreement for you guys to have had the relationship in the first place. The narcissist and cluster personality obtaining new supply, they have absolutely broken or they have disregarded that uh, mutual agreement or that uh, connection that you had to, to mutually agree to have the relationship. They totally walked away. So technically, yes, they did break up. They did walk away from the relationship. So again, that's what's on your side. You have that leverage, but it goes undetected because you're reactionary. You're in your feelings or you may be in your uh, ego. See, it goes undetected by that person who has been devaluated because they're wondering how this has happened. Why would the narcissist do this or that to him or her? Well, no, 
technically they did break up they just didn't do it in a respectable manner they didn't do it in a responsible manner so the narcissist and customer personality again technically and this is to your advantage they did break up with you because they moved on to somebody else they didn't communicate it see they're trying to underhandedly make sure they keep you holding on and they want to keep the romance on the back burner so they can recycle it later. So this is why the opportunity goes undetected to free themselves from the crazy making because they're not critically thinking about what's really happening. So on one hand, it's like they're saying, well, I didn't break up with you and why would you leave? So they can turn around and say that you left him or her. Once you're a reactionary, that's one of the things that they're gonna say is that you left him or her instead of the reality being they're not going to state what the reality is and that is they're underhandedly holding on to you holding on to the romance for the narcissist to supply and to make sure they maintain control while at the same time moving on to new supply that's what's really going on and a person who knows that they're not going to more than likely remain in the relationship or in that crazy making with the narcissist and cussing personality. They will use their time wisely. And that is when the narcissist has gotten new supply, they're going to look at what's really going on and they will behave accordingly. More than likely, this is when they're going to move forward. The narcissist and cussing personality will not have a bad romance to come back to because you're not going to be there. While they have moved on to new supply, you're using that time wisely to look at what's really going on. So by the time they do come back around, and more than likely they will, right? You're going to be moving on forward. You're going to be thriving forward. The narcissist and cluster personality, that's a curveball that they're not expecting. The narcissist and cluster personality knows that more than likely they're going to be able to hold on to you in the bad romance. Or the romance you know however you want to put it they want to that in other words the chain of the narcissistic supply has not been broken more than likely the narcissist will get it in their minds that hey you know i can just go back to this person anytime i want yes i have new supply however the current supply that i just devaluated or the current supply that i just discarded right see the narcissist and cluster personality when they discard and they devaluate, for them, the, really, the romance is not over. They want to be able to go back to it. So this is part of the crazy-making. The devaluation and the discard is part of the crazy-making. It's not a definite breakup. Not in the mind of the narcissist. This is absolutely why those of us who have gotten away, in other words, we have been the ones or the few who have taken the opportunity to think, to critically think, when the narcissist did pull this type of shenanigan. So I say from experience, the best thing to do is to utilize your time wisely by just critically thinking. The game changer is when the narcissist does pull this particular type of shenanigan just to uh, take a breather and take a look at what's actually going on. In other words, the critical thinking uh, has to kick in and you know, try not to become as reactionary. Now, again, I know this is tough. Again, I've gone through this. So what I'm saying is the game changer for me was to think about what was going on instead of just being in my feelings. And this does not mean that I really didn't care in the first place. I know some people might go there and say, well, you know, maybe you didn't care. No, I did. The thing is, some of us who really do care deeply, we also balance it with being able to think when certain things occur we just don't automatically go right into our feelings we don't automatically go right into the ego and it does take practice to do that right, i want to make that very clear i'm not trying to sound like somebody who's a guru and because i'm not <laughs> okay i'm just letting you know from personal experience the game changer for me was when the when the narcissist pulled that i critically thought about what was happening okay and i'm not going to sit here and say that there were not moments that there it was a little emotional of course but see the key word is balance you balance what you think with what you feel so that way when you make a decision more than likely it will be to your benefit rather than working against you 
So the game changer again for me was to just think about what was going on and also be mindful of what I was feeling and just balance that and then make the decision. And, and for me, it was just to move forward instead of just being available to that person when they did come back around. And they did. They came back around. I was like, no, I'm not interested because I thought about what was going on instead of just being in my feelings. I hope that makes sense because I know a lot, this happens with a lot of individuals. The game changer is just to uh, take a little time out and to critically think about what's going on when the narcissist pulls this type of crazy making shenanigan. They're coming back around thinking that they're going to be in control of you and things are still the same when they will more than likely find that it's not. Even if you decide, whatever it is you decide, right? The bottom line is, the opportunity is not missed by you because you're critically thinking about what's going on when the narcissist pulls this type of shenanigan. Let's move forward. Tool number I want to thank everyone for joining me today or tonight and of course wherever you are right now I wish you the very best love possible everyone who's decided to join the luminous star family welcome to luminous star and please don't forget to select the notification bell that way all the videos that come out you'll be the first to know on that note just a friendly reminder every Sunday and every Thursday there are new videos that are coming out so I want to thank everyone my stars especially Thank you guys and gals so much and stay tuned for more vlogs and stay tuned for more videos.